What's up, students? We are back at it again with another week. Uh, I'm super, super happy you're here with us. Um, I imagine that you guys are getting pretty bored. So what I would love for you guys to do is maybe down in the chat right now, uh, rate your boredom from one to 10. 10 being I am bored out of my mind. One being, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I've, I've been pretty entertained this entire time. Uh, today, I want to kind of talk about community. And uh, for us, I, I realize that community um, is really different. It is really, really different. And so I, I understand that it's really different, but I also believe even though it's different and we may be doing it in different ways, uh, that community still fosters a lot of things. Or in other words, um, it houses, it, it holds a lot of things um, for us, for us as the body of Christ, for us as cross church, um, for us as individuals. And so tonight, I, I, today, I want to I wanna talk about what that looks like. Um, what, hopefully what I do, hopefully what I do is uh, I answer a question for you. I answer the question for you. Um, what does community offer? What does community offer for me? What does is, what is community host for me? Um, what can it do for me? And so uh, hopefully I answer that question for you tonight moving forward. Um, but before I get there, I, you know, I said this just a second. Community looks really, really different for us. Community looks really different for us. Um, but I believe it still holds the same thing. And so what I want to encourage you to do is plug in. Don't check out. Plug in. Um, and, and for our fellow students that aren't here tonight, for, for students that that are a part of our youth group but haven't been you know, plugging in, I, I want you to encourage them as well. Um, send them to our Instagram page, you know, you know, post about our Instagram page. Uh, and on our, on our Instagram page, we have things like our band app and all these things that we can really actually have community with. Um, also we're, you know, we're doing our, our Bible studies on Mondays and, and Fridays. And so, excuse me, I, I, I really would love, uh, for us to, to maneuver these new ways of community and, simply because I believe there is a lot of value in community. I mean, I think scripture talks about community in every way possible. I mean, we look at Jesus and we see that he walked around with a community, right? He had 12 disciples. He had people that he was with and did ministry with. And so it's important to have community. And even though it's a different way and it looks different for us, um, I really, really want to encourage us to do that, to be a part of that. So I need your help. I need your help. Spread the word, right? Spread the word. S tell them the avenues and the ways. Point them to our Instagram page or our Facebook page that is helping them. Show them the ways that they can be a part of our community. They can still be a part of our youth group, even though we're social distancing. Um, a One way, and I'm going to start off with this one way. Uh, that we can have community, and it may not seem like it, uh, but it's just prayer. You know, prayer for each other, prayer for our our, our community, pray for for our students, for our parents of our church, um, pray for the staff of our church. Uh, you know, I, I think prayer um, really, really enhances and brings home a place of community. You know, those other people may not be hearing that. Um, but, but it does. It does. And so I'm going to start off with a prayer. I'm going to open us up with a prayer. And then I'm going to give us a few things that I believe community offers. So dear Heavenly Father, uh, God, I, I just, I'm just here praying for, for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, God. Um, I'm praying for all our brothers and sisters in Christ in Carlinville and Gerard and in and, Verdon and, and Litchfield and Gillespie and all of these areas um, but I'm also praying for our brothers in Christ across the nation, God, across our world. God, uh, I know that you call us to community. And God, I believe that through all of this, that we are going to be brought closer together, God, that your glory is going to shine through all of this, that there are going to be places and moments that people just see how good you are, God. And I, I'm just praying for community. I'm praying for unity amongst everyone, God, uh, amongst the, the, the non-believers, the believers. Um, God, I, I am just asking for you to be present, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 
So I believe that is absolutely one way, even though we're in all these different places, even though we're not hearing um, each other's prayers, but that is a way of establishing community, establishing community in the spirit. And I think that's an amazing way to start. So first off, uh, I want to start with community offers love. Community offers love. Community, uh, you know, fosters love. And so I'm going to pull my handy dandy cell phone out here. I'm a, I am I have a scripture here for you. Um, we're going to be in Colossians chapter three, verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all or in, and over all these virtues, put love, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now, Paul is, is writing this, this, uh, this letter, right? And so um, we see uh, even before this in, um, you know, in, in what he's speaking, he's talking about all these things. Paul always speaks about love being such a high thing on our list. And I think something we might oversee something that we may overlook is that love is so important in community. And I think this is something that, that needs to be said, something that needs to be brought to light. I think it's something that, that we probably know, um, but don't actually do. And so when Paul's speaking here, he says, take love and put it above everything else. And then he goes as far as saying that love is the binder to perfect unity. Right when you're making your cake, when you're when you're cooking all these things, or making a, a burger, right, and you're just throwing your meat together, you have to have some sort of binder. You have to have something that holds everything together, right? And most of the time, that's eggs. You know, when I make a burger, and, you know, I take the the yolk of an egg and and I put it in there with you know a pound of ground beef, and I make my patties from that. Or or for the bakers, you know, you always add eggs to that because if you didn't have that, um, not I mean. Baking, it would fail. Burgers, it's a little bit of a different story, but it would fall apart. It wouldn't last. It, it wouldn't come out the way you want it to come out. And so what Paul is saying in the midst of community, in the midst of, of all of these things, of these unity, um, that God brings a sense of love that holds everything together. And, and so when we don't partake in community, we don't experience that love, right? I mean, we experience God's love in, in, in so many different ways, but we don't experience God's love in and amongst the body of Christ. And that's something God wants for us, right? It's, it's something God, God needs for us because I believe when we're growing in our relationships with each other, that we're also growing in him. And so it's so important to be a part of community because we experience God's love in a way we've never really ever experienced it before. Another thing, right? Another thing that comes to light is when, when we meet in a community, God is present, you know? And, and you know, we, we talk about experiencing God's love in amongst a community and that's love from each other. That's love to one another. Um, and, and just being compassionate, fe- meeting their needs and, and doing things that they, they need help with and, and encouraging them and all these things. Um, but also God is present in community. God is present in community. When, when we meet together, when we join together, whether that's over video chat or over Instagram live or right now in this YouTube premiere, right? Maybe it's, it's just chatting in a group chat through the week. God is present. And it's hard for us to believe that because it's like, well, we're just texting or we're just looking at each other, but God is still present. God is present in our conversations. God is present in the stories we tell. God is present in, in, in the things that he's doing in each other and working through us. In Matthew 18, 20, it says, when two or more meet, I am there, right? He says, I am there. I'm present. And so it's something that, that we can't overlook. Yes, individual time is is perfect, right? I mean, I mean, scripture talks about having your secret place and getting by yourself and, and, and reading, being intentional with God. But he also brings us to a place, scripture also, God also brings us to a place that calls us to be in community. And when we're in community, God is present. God is there. 
God is a part of what we're doing. God is a part of the conversations we're having. God is a part of, of the stories we're having. And when we hear stories and we have those conversations, once again, when we're growing in our relationship, we're growing in him. And I think that's something that's just so important and powerful. And the last thing I want to talk about is God encourages or God encourages us to encourage others, right? And so um, in our community um, fosters encouragement. And now I, I think when we think of this, or when I think of this, um, I think of Hebrews, right? And it speaks about spurring each other forward uh, into love and into good deeds. Um, but I want to kind of look at a different angle of what encouraging means, because I, I think in our times and, and what we're walking through as, as a nation, as cross church, as a community, um, I, I believe that this encouraging may look a little differently. And so in Galatians chapter six, verse two, um, it, it says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. And so Yes, we can encourage each other by, by spurring each other on and spurring each other to, to love and good deeds. But I think right now what we need is to be able to carry each other's burdens. Um, I, I think a lot of us are dealing with things in different lights, in different avenues, in different ways. Um, and I think in the, in the midst of all that, we need people to lean on. We need people to to call brothers and sisters of Christ. We need people to, to have conversations with. We need people that say, you know what? I, I see that you're struggling with money. I see that you're struggling with food. I see that you're struggling with, with just being okay. Let me provide something for you. Let me help out. Let me lend a hand to you. And so even though community offers an encouragement in a way that spurs each other forward, I also think community encourages us to hold each other's burdens. And that in itself can be encouraging. So in the midst of everything that's happening, in, in the midst of, of all the feelings we're feeling and all the things we're dealing with, uh, I, I believe an importance, God speaks of an importance um, to be a part of each other, to be with each other. Uh, because in a time like this, there are burdens. And there are things that are hard and we have to be able to lend a hand and carry some of those burdens for the other people, for our students, for, for our church. Some of us, maybe it's for our parents, um, but community offers encouragement. Community offers God's presence and community offers love. And those are all things that we need. And in all ways, right, we come back, I'm going to keep coming back to this place when we grow in our relationships with each other, when we grow by encouraging and carrying each other's burdens, when we grow by, by seeing each other and, and having conversations and God being present in those times, when we, when we grow um, by just having conversations, by loving each other well, by, by letting that be the, the, the binder of our unity, the binder of our community, when we grow in those things, we also grow in Christ. We also grow in God. I'm going to wrap up with this. Um, I believe God doesn't, God didn't intend for us to be in isolation. Um, God didn't intend for us to be by our, be by ourselves, right? I talked about Jesus and his community earlier. That's just an example, right? That's just one example. And so what I want to do is encourage you, point you to, to find somebody, you know, start a group chat with, with all high school guys, start a group chat with all middle school boys. Um, you know, you know, something along those lines that we can just have conversation, that we can encourage, we can carry each other's burdens, that God can be present in our stories, in our conversations, because when we meet in two or more people, God is there and that we can be loving and allow that love and God's love to be the binder of what's taking place. I'm going to close in prayer and then hopefully uh, you spread the word that you begin to start community, whether that's on band app or, or Instagram, or you're just a part of this or whatever it is, um, that you begin to, to see God's faithfulness and what he offers in community. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, I, just, I just thank you so much for just a simple opportunity to talk to a camera, God. Um, 
God, you are, you are so good and so present, even when we're doing live videos and Zooms, video chats and, and all of these things, God, even though we're not seeing each other face to face, God, you are still faithful and present in our community, God. God, I just pray that you begin to, to show your faithfulness to us. God, I, I thank you for an amazing church, an amazing church home, um, just to be able to have this opportunity to continue doing what we do on Wednesdays. God, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, everyone. I'll see you next week.